Hello everybody and welcome to the topless edition of the What's the Scuttlebutt podcast video edition. Um, as you may not know, or probably don't know because I haven't told anybody, um, Sunday I got asked if I could come up to Zephyr Hills to do some video shoots or film shoots, if you will, for a documentary someone's working on. I don't have any information. All I know is I was asked if I can come up to Zephyr Hills on Thursday and be there about 4 p.m. I'm at the airport to show up at a hangar. They have a C-47, um, ask us to bring our airborne gear, which I have right there. And a little caveat, a little few things that are a little crazy we'll get to, but i um, happy. I'm thrilled to be doing some more background acting work. Um, so I really don't know what it entails. I don't know how big of a project this is, but it's gotta be big enough that if they're gonna rent a C-47 in a hangar to do some shooting and ask a few of us to come out, um, the weird thing is they're doing 100 first and as you guys know I do 82nd airborne so sadly I have to modify my uniform a little bit so let's get over what gear I have to take and don't mind the garage it's a hot mess but that'll be fixed soon. As some of you know a few months back I picked up this restored fixed D-bail airborne helmet that I was going to remove the spades from because I do 82nd airborne and I'm still in the market for an original or reproduction airborne liner Sally this is one of those plastic ones but it's the only liner I have for airborne right now and it was given to me so no complaints there um, but I quickly have to take my straps off the rear seam helmet that I used to use for my airborne impression and put it on here because I got invited up to Zephyr Hills this weekend to be part of a airborne world war ii documentary that they're shooting some b-roll for so i need to go ahead and take these off of this guy and put them on here um it's like 10 43 at night and i have a few days to get my stuff together i'm not going to bore you guys with watching me remove this and sew it on here um once i put this netting on here and these straps on here and get this thing up and ready i will uh show you the final product and then I will take this rear seam helmet, put it up on eBay and sell it because I have no need for them. Um, as I get more front seams, like this is a rear seam as well. So this will be one I'm getting rid of too because I got a fixed, um, regular fixed bail not too long ago from a Marine Corps impression. So I'm going to slowly start selling off my rear seams as I replace them with front seam helmets because, well, I like to be correct. So Okay, so here's what I got. Um, this is, I'm going to, since it's a documentary, I'm going to pull out most of my original stuff. This is my original haversack. Um, I think it was made in 42, I want to say. Uh, let's see here. Yes, made in 1942. I usually don't break this stuff out unless I'm doing museum events. Whenever I do real reenacting out in the field, I use the reproduction. You can see the color difference. Now the interesting thing is the Florida sun has turned this a little yellow, it used to be darker. But from what I understand is the reason that happens is the chemicals they used to treat those back in 1942, they won't allow us to use anymore for environmental purposes. Too rough on the environment. And so what happens is, is a lot of these reproduction bags, after the sun hits them long enough, they turn this bright yellow. You may see some footage in some of my videos where I have my e-tool cover and it's super bright yellow, but if you flip it over to where the sun doesn't hit it, it has a different color. Interesting thing um, about some of the difference, this is a cheaper haversack. This is not an at the front or anything. It is a cheaper brand. Um, here's one of the things they cheaped out on. I just noticed tonight. So this guy, just a good old regular snap, whereas on the originals, it's actually a button type of snap. Um, here's something interesting. On the reproduction, when they put the piping on the inside, I guess to keep from fraying, but on the original one, to save material, they did not. So that's one of the differences. Um, I do have my canteen packed in here. I got some K, K ration stuff. I know they didn't have K rations, they used C rations, but that's uh, primarily just in there for stuffing to make the bag look more realistic. Um, I do need to shine my boots. As we said before, this mannequin is about five. Eight. I'm six four. I think I'm shrinking. So this uniform is gonna look super baggy because it's for me, but it's on a super short mannequin. I did pull out the original, I think 1942 um, M1 belt. I've got my original era can um, first aid pouch on there. 
1942 original canteen um so i'm sad to say i'm gonna have to cut off my airborne patch which i spent a lot of time putting that on but it is what it is and i was getting ready to i haven't really shared this with you guys yet this is the refurbished d bale airborne helmet that i got and i was actually getting ready to do a video where i took some paint thinner to get rid of those spades because i do 80 second airborne and this is set up for the 506 um 101st but turns out i'm going to need it for thursday so sadly that patch is going away i'm going to put on 101st patch um sadly i don't have a pressure liner um this actually airborne liner was given to me by a friend of mine named john thomas um, so i can't complain about that and the only other difference for you those you guys who know you're airborne is my reinforcement straps are the green ones which the 101st use khaki so i haven't decided if i'm going to remove those for this film shoot or if we're going to worry about it too much maybe we'll leave that as an easter egg for you guys the other thing i'm missing is i don't have paddings for the shoulders um i guess it won't matter too much if the other guys aren't wearing them but if they are um, i'm gonna look silly i do have the netting for my helmet but i didn't put it in because the stupid plastic liner you can see right there where i had to glue it the last time i tried to put it on i actually cracked the helmet because the um, liner is a little too large really and so when you try to put the netting material in there the liner doesn't want to go in so sadly the netting's not on there um for you guys getting into the hobby i can't express the importance of pocket filler um, when these guys landed they had all their belongings i need to put some more in there right now i got two t-shirts in this pocket i got a t-shirt in that pocket that pocket's nice and bulgy i actually have my parachute material uh, that a lot of the guys put around their necks here's something cool you guys may not know so right you're parachuting in you're up in a tree Maybe you can't reach your battle knife that would be on your leg. And so they actually have a little zipper right here. And it's, if you unbutton this, right here you have a zipper with a pocket. And in that pocket, you'd keep a pocket knife. And this is an air correct knife. This is what the guys would have had in there. So uh, this is what they would have had in that pocket. And so that's their little pocket in there. Unless you're a reenactor or know your uniforms for World War II, most people don't know that pocket's there. And most reenactors, or a lot of reenactors, I guess I should say, don't have the knife in there. Try to be authentic. So uh, that's what we're doing. I haven't decided if I'm going to take the pistol. I know most of you guys didn't carry them. Here is my original bayonet that we featured in one of the uh, What's the Skeletal podcast dude in a box. Obviously, this is a reproduction sheath, but this is the Super Doll original beat up, chopped up, mangled bayonet, which is perfect for reenacting. I will say that I might try to get it sharpened a little bit, and but that's what we're doing. Um, so hopefully, I will try to sneak you guys in a little bit when we're not shooting or sitting around the set. I don't know if we're doing any outdoor shooting, which we might. I'm half speculating we might because we're doing this shooting at uh, starting at 6 p.m. And depending on how many hours it takes, it's going to go well into the night. And if we're inside of a hangar, uh, maybe they're going to take the C-47 outside onto the runway to get some outside shots. I have no idea. All I know is that the Airborne took off and jumped into France around midnight. And so, and I know we're doing a nighttime shoot. So kind of doing the math, it's gonna be fun. As you can see, my uniform does look rather new. I've only worn it for three times, I think. I mean, I do got some dirt on the knees and all that. I don't wash them, but my uniform's relatively new. I was pondering, a lot of guys take Vaseline. They cover this in Vaseline and it gives it the gas penetrated a look I was considering doing it but I reached out to John who's also going and they don't have theirs done so I would actually stand out on the film if I did mine and they didn't have theirs done so the fact that theirs aren't done I'm not going to do mine so that we all look uniform with our uniforms 
on film. So that's what we're going on. That's what we're doing. I'm super excited about it. I love uh, participating in uh, the creation of television and movies. Um, if you guys don't know, um, Smithsonian Network coming out soon and on Disney streaming will be the remake, the TV series of The Right Stuff. And I was lucky enough to get um, a gig as a background actor. I'm in the first pilot episode. And then I'm in episode, I think, five, the New Year's Eve episode. Um, that was a two-day shoot. But um, when that episode comes out, I actually have some photos that I took during filming. And we'll talk about that then. So um, this is not my first time participating in a production. Once again, this is going to be a, definitely a lot smaller production. But it's still going to be fun, and I'm looking forward to it. See you guys in a little bit. Okay. There's a video film from the cab of the Tundra. I know I still haven't shared the Tundra with you guys. I've just been super busy. And when I do share the Tundra in all its glory, I want to serve it well. Right now, I am on a scramble. Every time I go to do an event, uh, there's always something that I need. And this is the third time I'm officially doing a airborne impression. And I almost got it completed. There's just a few things I need. And one of those things, um, I picked up a shovel, the knee tool, the classical kind, and I'll share it with you guys when I get to my destination. Um, I picked it up on eBay a few weeks back. Now, actually, wow, with Pando Pandora, <laughs> I need to slow down. With the pandemic, time has come to a screeching halt. Uh, this year seems like it's only been two months long, but here we are at the end of July. Happy birthday, Carrie! Your birthday's in a few days, so every time I edit this and you watch it, happy birthday. Love you. Um, I'm heading to Walmart to try to find some OD green or OD khaki paint. The e-tool that I got, at some point in its life, someone decided it would be better off if it was painted John Deere green. And so I'm on my way to Zebra Hills to do this documentary, and I want my uniform to be as complete as possible, including the e-tool, but I don't want to be the guy on the screen with a John Deere tractor green e-tool hanging off of his belt. So I'm heading to Walmart, which just happens to be by the interstate. Stop at Walmart, run in there. I stopped at Michael's. They didn't have the paint I needed. Um, the other problem I'm having is I have my helmet net, but as you guys saw earlier, my liner is one of those cheap plastic liners. And um, when you try to put the netting on, the last time I did it, it cracked. But the last time I did it, I was putting the liner in a rear seam swivel bale late war helmet. And I think maybe that liner was probably um, formed off of one similar, because it took some work, but I was able to get it in. Can't <laughs> get it in. Uh, but now I have a repurposed, um, rebuilt, Restored, that's the word I'm looking for. But now I have a restored front seam Schluter D-Bell helmet. And the liner fits in it great, but once I put the net on it, it doesn't want to slide. And you can see it hanging down a quarter of an inch and it looks like ass. So when I get there, I'm gonna have a little bit of time. I gotta show a patch on my jacket. I gotta spray paint a knee tool and hopefully get my liner put into my helmet. But we'll see. This is the uh, joys of uh, production. I don't know what the scenes are yet. I'm hoping that these guys who rented the C-47s also rented some parachute harnesses so that we look the roll look kind of silly if we're all in there with no parachutes. Um, but hey, I don't have a parachute. I was not asked if I have a parachute. I was just told to grab my gear and come. So that's what I'm doing. So uh, I gotta stop at Walmart, then I'll hit the road and I'll get back with y'all momentarily. You have arrived at your destination. The route guidance is now finished. We are heading to the hangar where the C-47's at. This is my contact in front of me. I don't know who he is. He just came open the gate and now I'm following him. We're at the Zephyr Hills Airport. I don't, I think this is my first time at Zephyr Hills. Can't be sure. Do a lot of reenactments over the years. I may have been up here before but definitely not on his backside. Gotta say, the Tundra makes for such a nice travel. Oh, I see the plane now. Travel to uh, distances. The Tacoma was nice, but it was a base model. Um, 
whereas the Tundra I feel like I'm driving around my living room. So it's definitely a nicer drive. There she is. Hopefully they got beverages for us because I'm thirsty. my shovel that someone painted John Deere green back in the day. I'm going to try to paint it to look more authentic for this film shoot. With some Walmart camo green paint. Let that dry, come out, flip it over, and do side two. Call it done. It's hot. The people who were shooting it were originally going to start at six. Now they want us to hurry up and get it done. Super hot. I got to go pick up Mike and bring him in. And all that fun stuff. So here we go. doing 100 first in my 80 second uniform. We just got done doing the, the video shoot. As it turns out, this whole thing is for an Air Force training video. So that's pretty cool. Downside is most of us will never get to see it. But I think the director is going to uh, do a Zoom meeting with us when it's all said and done. But yeah, it's kind of cool to know that we're doing something for the official military. So that's what this whole thing was for. It's hot, like always here in Florida. And uh, I'm about ready to head home here shortly. And that was a Mustang going about 115, 120, because I'm going 80. He just zipped by me like I'm going 20. The reenactment season's basically been canceled due to COVID, so it was nice to get out there. It was nice to get suited up, hang out with the guys. We've got some great photos, uh, we've got some video footage, and um, got to put some more sweat into my airborne impression because I've only worn that thing like maybe three, four times at the most. And I did uh, acquire a 1944 May West vest. I have been looking at one for one online, but they've been going for outrageous. I think one of my saw on eBay that I was actually watching yesterday sold for $270. Um, so the one I acquired was a hell of a lot less than that. I'll uh, just say it was less than $100. So that was awesome. Uh, got some cool uh, photos. Got to hang out with John and uh, Mike and Mark and Ted. It's always good seeing Ted. Um, got a little bit of footage, you know, as we said before, I don't have my own cameraman, so when I'm there geared up, being someone else's talent, if you will, I can't exactly be have myself around, so I snuck some footage and we'll put in here, but all in all, you know, it, it was fun, but I think a lot of us were, felt a little rushed and, uh, you know, like, hey, we're here, let's 
get our time worth, so we all went out and had dinner afterwards and then got to hang out and talk. And oh no, it was a good time, no, no complaints. But uh, turns out it was a training video for Air Force cadets, so not even the Air Force, but the cadets. Uh, I don't know if that's like Civil Air Patrol or what I know, like junior cats. I think it's a film to teach the history of how the Air Force came to be. Obviously, for most of you know this, if you're watching this, anyhow, uh, before the Air Force was around, you had the Army Air Corps. And so I think this part was explaining how the Army Air Corps was responsible for uh, paratroopers during D Day. And I know before I got there, Ted and a, another gentleman did some shooting inside the cockpit as Army Air Corps pilots. Um, so, all in all, it was fun. You know, it's a two hour drive each way. I'm heading home now. Um, Got to put on the gear, got to, uh, you know, hang out inside of a C-47, that was cool, you know, after you do this for a few years, you start to take a little bit for granted all the cool stuff, I mean, how many people get to sit in a C-47 dressed in, you know, a paratrooper uniform, wearing all the gear, um, so, good time, um, I still got to help somebody create some, uh, media, create some content, and, uh, get to be part of something cool, so, good time, um, Nice little surrogate to the COVID dead reenacting season. And so it's always good to see Ted and the guys too. So anyhow, um, unless I have some footage I'll put at the end of this, which I don't know what it would be. Thank you guys for hanging out for another video. If you haven't done so already, please like and subscribe and share us with a friend. And if you haven't done so, please check out the podcast, WTSP World War II. What does that stand for? That stands for the What's the Scuttlebutt podcast. And that address, once again, is WTSP World War II.com. You can get this new K-Ration Supper t-shirt as well as the K-Ration Dinner t-shirt there. As well as like four or five other different WTSP World War II shirts. And right now, go on to your um, podcast apps and just type in WTSP World War II. It'll come up and listen to the um, last episode, which is um, an interview with 97-year-old Jake Larson. Um, if you're on TikTok, you can follow him at Story Times with uh, Papa Jake. He talks about his D-Day landing, uh, a little bit of San Lo, and a little bit of Battle of uh, the Bulge. I just did part two with him yesterday. We're going to get that episode up. And then we have him on the books for a third interview because he's full of information and we love talking to vets on the What's the Scuttlebutt podcast. With that being said, if you know someone who was alive during that time, whether they are a vet or they're on the home front, what have you, and they are interested in getting their story digitized, email us at info at WTSPWorldWar2.com. That's info at WTSPWorldWar2.com. Thank you guys so much. I still got a, uh, oh, I don't know, hour and a half left. It's 822. I'll be home at uh, 10 o'clock, and I got to stop and get gas. So thank you guys so much, and we'll talk to you later. This has been a Digital 410 production. <laughs>